So um, the big announcement in astronomy over the last few weeks is the discovery of a huge new ring around Saturn. Absolutely enormous, far bigger than the existing rings. I mean, it's kind of interesting, and, and there's a theory as to where it comes from, that it's probably um, this one, of the, one of the moons of Saturn shares the same orbit as this enormous ring, a uh, moon called Phoebe. Um, and it's thought probably this uh, new ring is material that was ejected from Phoebe when something smashed into Phoebe. And in fact, if you just add up the total amount of stuff that has to be in this ring to give you some idea of how diffusive it is, even though it's spread out over this enormous region of space, it's actually only about sort of one crater's worth of dust, one crater's worth of bits and pieces. Um, so it's probably something smashed into Phoebe, threw a, dug out a new crater, and the material that was ejected in that crater is now forming this ring. Saturn's entire ring and satellite system is probably one of the most interesting parts of the solar system. Uh, there's, there's lots of stuff going on uh, out there. Saturn's got over 60 moons or little moonlets, as well as this big, large uh, ring system. And if you were to actually go and look at the rings in detail, you'd find that they're, not, they're certainly not a solid object. They're made up of lots and lots of little particles, ranging from microscopic little dust particles up to big, boulder-sized chunks of rock, and, and mostly ice, really. And they line up in a really flat circle around the planet. So to scale, they actually are as thin as a piece of paper. So it's amazingly thin, even though they go very, very far away from the planet. And the rings change their angle to us. So sometimes we see the rings as this big, brilliant circle around the planet, and sometimes they're actually angled flat, as they just were at the beginning of this year. So sometimes you can't see it, which confused Galileo to no end when he first <laughs> found these 400 years ago. One of the things he could never quite figure out was Saturn because his, his telescope was so crude and so simple that you really couldn't get a decent picture of Saturn with it. And so he concluded that Saturn probably had ears. He could see these bits sticking out the side and he described them as ears. It was only much later that it was realized that it's a complete ring system around it. You show Galileo, if you show Galileo the pictures you get, you know, you point the Hubble Space Telescope at Saturn, the amazing pictures you get with it, he would be truly astounded. The really, really spectacular images of Saturn have come from the hugely successful Cassini mission. So this one's one of my favorites. So what you're looking at is just a portion of Saturn's ring system. And you can start to see really how thin this ring system is, and it's curving around here. But what's neat about this picture, in my mind, is that in one snapshot you get a view of some of the other interesting parts of, of the, the Saturn ring system. So one is this tiny little moon here. I um, uh, can't remember the name of it. <laughs> um, and, but you can see that it's really quite small, it's really quite irregular, but behind is the glory of Saturn's moon system, which is Titan. And Titan is, again, one of the most interesting parts of the solar system. You see that this picture here is hazy, and it's hazy because Titan actually has an atmosphere, and not just a little thin atmosphere, a real proper thick atmosphere made mostly out of nitrogen and other gases like that. So it makes it one of the prime spots in the solar system where we'd love to go and look for signs of really primitive life. So hitching a ride on Cassini right at the beginning of the missions was a separate probe called Huygens. That probe was launched into the atmosphere um, sent down information as it streamed down through the atmosphere and was designed to actually land with a thud on the surface of Titan and send back information about what it landed in. So it was completely unclear whether it would land in an ocean and float around or whether it would land on solid ground. Uh, it turns out it landed on something I think was best described as creme brulee, so something a bit, um, bit with a bit of give in it, but with a bit of a crust as well. So one thing about Saturn is that it's not very dense. It's the least dense planet in the entire solar system. In fact, it's less dense than water. So if we could find a body of water as big as we needed to plop Saturn right in it, Saturn would actually float in that water. Saturn also has my favorite moon, which is Mimas, and I like it because um, it's rocky, it's got a lot of craters on it, but there's one huge crater that's about a third of the diameter and it looks like the Death Star. <laughs> so it's the Death Star moon. <laughs> cool, all right. That's... So this one is even, even better. This is my, my real favorite picture of Saturn. And again, this is sent back from the Cassini probe. And what you're seeing is Saturn in eclipse. So Cassini is actually sitting behind Saturn and the sun is on the other side. So just as if 
on Earth. Sometimes the moon gets in, in, in front of us, between us and the sun, and we get an eclipse. That's what you're seeing here. Uh, Saturn is eclipsing the sun. So you're seeing it backlit. So the rings are being backlit. Some of that light is scattering off, so we do actually see the dark side of Saturn through scattered light. Uh, and you see this wonderful, wonderful effect of the ring system. And you see how layered it is and how it extends out, and even to really, really fuzzy rings uh, much further out. But the, but the very best part of this picture, in my mind, gives us a little perspective, is this little spot here. And it's not, it's not a spot on my computer screen. If we zoom in a little further, you see it here. You see it's actually a little round blob, and that's the Earth. That's the Earth seen from billions of miles away, um, and again, really just shows us what a tiny little insignificant spot we are in the universe. Um, but how lucky we are to be able to send out these probes and send back information like this.